Hello. Today's February 21, 21st, and we're doing security and nonsense. Why is that funny? I don't know, because I said 21 and not 21st. You should hear me try to activate a credit card when they tell you, like, read off the number. I get tickled because I forget, like, to be consistent by saying zeros what? or O's. And then I start You're, to laugh, and it's just awkward. And why don't you just push the keys? Because it tells you to speak it out loud. Oh. I've always pushed And my, my accent, it also gets thrown off by sometimes. It's like, excuse me, can you say that again? And I'm like, screw you, robot lady. I always push the keys, but it might be doing that because most people call from a cell phone, which doesn't have real buttons. Yeah. You should sue them for discriminating against you. Appalachian discrimination. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Speaking of Appalachian discrimination, although I guess West Virginia Ridley isn't in the Appalachians, is it? No, I would say uh, that counts. Yeah. 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 But they're definitely, uh, you know, white trash, just like us. And they are going to be doing some online voting this election. Hey, I don't know why West Virginia is the one that's doing that. But anyway, they're using the Votes app, which they have assured us is fine. Z. And there's nothing wrong with it. It's going to work great. MIT researchers disclosed vulnerabilities in the Votes moding, mobile voting election app. Researchers, researchers say Votes security flaws could allow someone to alter, stop, or expose how an individual user has voted. Dun, 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 mm. dun, dun, dun. Now, votes responded, and they said they're using the app without connecting to the vote server, which offers a lot more security. And this is not genuine because they should have connected to the server to get the whole experience. But the last person who did that votes sued. <laughs> mm. uh. This is just a nightmare. And. Any minute now, we're going to wake up and realize everything's fine. <laughs> the United gonna, States is not spiraling. We're going to wake up in one of the Wuhan quarantine buildings. <laughs> <laughs> waiting like, oh, for no. the crematorium. <laughs> <laughs> They're not even bothering with the crematorium at this point. It's just an open pit. <laughs> Have we heard anything? So I heard that we were sending, like, the WHO is supposed to be over there, the, the World Health Care Organization. No, it's the band. Yes. They're sending the who in <laughs> yes. to try to get their spirits But up. did they, have we heard anything from them? It's real bad. I haven't seen any headlines, no. Yeah, I just I know that they sent them in earlier this I'm week. I'm sure they're hitting a brick wall in terms of the, they probably have a handler who they can't leave the hotel room without. I can't wait to see that Lifetime original drama <laughs> when it's when it's ready. I think oh, it's already you, out. It's called Contagion. Did yeah. you see the uh, the first hospital, the like the 10-day hospital? Is apparently has water leaks everywhere. Well, Ooh, it's not it was, too surprising. It's not done well. Yeah. Ooh. So That's people are like, they're literally on soggy beds with pneumonia. Ugh. That's not good. Seems, it seems like a lot of tarps would fix that. <laughs> what? Like putting them over, not, <laughs> over not the on people? the beds. No, well, on, on the roof. Well, I mean, with a house. No, no, it's not rain getting in. It's the plumbing system. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. That's worse. That's right. way worse. Because that's waste. Yeah. Or it's fresh water that you now have an opening into a virulent room. Oh, no. Uh. Oh, no. Well, speaking of viruses getting to where you wouldn't expect them to go, although, I mean, I guess we kind of did expect them to get into a building built in 10 days. <laughs> but traditionally, some places have always claimed, hey, we don't get viruses, like here in the U.S., <laughs> until, you know, a month from now. And one of those places was Apple. The Apple people were so smug about it. Well, who's <laughs> laughing now? Apple's mal malware problem is getting worse. Macs aren't as safe as they used to be. Here's how to protect yourself. Look, uh, Macs were never actually safe. They were only safe because people didn't bother. They were always badly architected. I like that it, this is what the image they picked. And I've got some bad news for you. In terms of actually making the Mac operating system more secure, Apple has not been interested in spending the money doing that. What they are interested in is locking the operating system down so that you can't make any changes and the only apps you can install come from the app store that is and then apple will vet the application to see if it's secure but actually once you've got the app installed on the device it's wildly insecure and that is not changing i like this advertisement did you watch episode four uh yes cbs all access how hype were you for the big unveil at the end i literally face palmed <laughs> did you vomit a little just like, just in your mouth yeah. i was thinking to myself her name 
makes a lot more sense now, right? <laughs> because at her age, she's never going to be back to a 10. <laughs> but she's a solid 7, but not of 10, of 9. Because she can't. she's too old to be. I kind of want to show you the shirt that I'm wearing underneath my sweater, but I really I don't, want, I don't really want to. I don't think anybody wants to see that. I'm wearing the Picard face palm shirt. Oh, okay. Oh, you know what else I loved about that That's episode? more relevant than just being like, I want to take my sweater off. And it's like, wait, what? I love that it's canon that Picard hates children. <laughs> he definitely I feel, does. I feel a lot of solidarity with him now. Yeah. I didn't know that about him. Yeah. yeah. Really? A lot of respect. Yeah. That's surprising to me. Yeah, he didn't. He's uh, such a kindly face that, like, as a child, I immediately was like, yeah, well, he's like a grandpa. They reveal that about him, and then they immediately try to temper it. Well, they it's like he had a lot of growing up to do when he was... You know, in his golden years, I guess, or whatever. Because, like, after the Enterprise, he was like, oh, you know, I'm dying. I should do the whole family thing. Maybe that would happen. I don't know. No. Because his family also died in a fire in France. and Maybe that would change that about his character. I don't agree. Picard hates children because that's the way that you should live. Well, there was an episode where a Ferengi got some of his DNA and used it to make it like as if some rando that he, might have been his kid would test positive as his kid and so like he was like i'm going to do my fatherly duty thing and it was like the most awkward episode ever no because he would be like that's impossible because picard always wraps it he <laughs> doesn't take chances <laughs> it was kind of like that 97 percent effective because uh you know he kept asking the doctors like are you sure are you really sure <laughs> i think there's got to be a mistake <laughs> he to get. and there was a mistake it's just like it was that one time where the Enterprise stopped at the intergalactic version of a truck stop. That's basically how they explained it, yeah. He got a horrible stomach virus and then got some broad <laughs> pregnant. Uh, well, that's a, that's a bit of a non sequitur, isn't it? Let's get back to security news and let's talk about... It's a kind of security. We know that uh, Gmail for years has been reading our emails and doing whatever it wants with that data. Literally everybody. But now we find out that they're not alone. In fact, anybody that gives you free email is probably violating you. How big companies spy on your emails. Multiple confidential documents obtained by Motherboard show the sort of, the, the sort of companies that want to buy data derived from scraping the contents of your email inbox. They're not talking about Google or Microsoft here. They're talking about Edison. It's a popular email app. Nothing's free. At this point, why would anybody use any non-open source software? Because they don't know what that means. <laughs> and it's free, and it's right there on the App Store, so it's a fine, right? Apple tells us it's fine. It's, an, it's or in it's the Apple already installed. Garden. Like, as soon as you get your phone, it's like, oh, their Gmail's already on here. It is, Great. it is really hilarious that Apple is like, we're protecting you from malware by locking your device down. And then you look at stuff like this, and it's like, oh. Oh, wait. Oh, no. But they did admit in the Apple story that it's not traditional viruses as much as it's like 70% adware yeah. which Apple uh, Google adware uh. they can steal your passwords but that's not the only problem that you have it's not just the Apple App Store the Play Store is not really any better and the Chrome extensions mm, still a minefield 500 Chrome extensions secretly upload private data for millions of users. So these are very popular Chrome extensions and a lot of them, uh, I think there was only one out of a couple of hundred servers that these apps hit that had been previously flagged for malware. So this is a very extensive problem which is largely flown under the radar. And it's the old like, you know, show one ad but really it's a different ad and it's this whole big network and they have this really really complicated and complex way of doing it for for ad fraud yeah but well, on that scale they make a lot of money one of the articles suggested that uh, a lot of this goes through that rigmarole to simulate clicks on ads so like you'll click on something on the document but the uh, the the extension might move an ad underneath your cursor or somehow will make that real mouse event bubble through to you know the ad or whatever as part of an ad fraud, but it doesn't do it too much, so they fly fly below the uh, radar and, and still get paid. Smart. You can't get greedy in this world. Everything in moderation, including ad fraud. <laughs> <laughs> and if you do get infected on your Android device and probably Apple too, we just haven't found out about it yet. 
Getting rid of it could be a bit of a challenge. An old Android virus is reinstalling itself after every factory reset. Google needs to investigate stat because the reason that Google needs to investigate is because the reinfection somehow occurs from Google Play. What it What is suggested here, the article doesn't come right out and say, but is that somehow your particular device is linked to some kind of a profile with Google Play so that when you install Google Play, it's like, oh, this is this device and you okayed me to install this application. Let me install this application in the background that is actually malware. Like there's a way that cell phone providers can do that, like Verizon with visual voicemail. When you install Google Play on a Verizon phone that's been rooted and you go to do stuff with Play, Play is like, oh, I've seen this device before. Let me set up you know these apps or what apps are you eligible for you can actually just you can go on your desktop browser and be like install this app on my phone and it's like okay cool i'll do that this looks like that i suggest that you turn off google play and then try to clear it with an uh, antivirus but i gotta think as soon as you turn it back on yeah it's just gonna be a problem again this is a developing story i'm sure we'll have another update for that soon sure we'll have a denial Google. Well, that would never happen. We would no, never do that. I, the, Google's denial is going to be, oh, this is a feature of Google Play. They did this long convoluted thing that nobody knows about that we did because user convenience. Okay. The viruses are also getting more advanced. Of course, you know, we got all this great AI and machine learning and, you know, we're, we're automating everything. Well, guess what? Viruses can benefit from that. And they're finding all sorts of new ways to infect you. One of the most destructive botnets can now spread to nearby Wi-Fi networks. They're talking about Emotet. It's like the South Koreans that we learned about earlier in the week where they have two computers, a secure computer and a non-secure computer. Well, this could hop from the non-secure computer to the secure computer if they're within Wi-Fi proximity of one another, potentially. So it uh, basically just looks for all the various uh, routers they can see and tries to find out as much as it can about them and then begins dictionary attacking them. If it gets into one, you know, it's like the coronavirus. It's a 2.5 <laughs> person, what is that, in ROV or something like that? What's the, I can't remember the term. It's how many people inf get infected from one infection. 2.5? That's the, we don't know yet. We're still studying, but 2.5 would be like pretty impressive because that's a, a pandemic that's level a, that's infection. That's a curve, yeah. I think it's like 4.6 is really bad. I'm just saying, ready.gov has a page about pandemics. <laughs> and I have checked it, and they've updated it recently for coronavirus. It's is like it, related links, coronavirus they, on the CDC website. Is it saying that everything's fine? Uh, it's just like, make sure you have enough food and water for two weeks. Don't be around <laughs> people who are sick. Yeah, wash your hands. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm sure the Chinese people aren't doing that. Yeah. Because, <laughs> you know. They're cave people who don't know that you should do that. But that's that's what the ready.gov website says. Or I think it might be preparedness.gov. I don't remember. We have got such a slew of leaks today. So many. More leaks than in the Wuhan hospital quarantine zone. It's just everywhere. And first up is Israel. Personal data of all 6.5 million Israeli Whoops. voters is exposed. The website for an election app used by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's party made it possible to view the full names, addresses, identity, and card numbers, and more. A plus. Oh, no. Ouch. That's not good. So this was one of those uh, systems where they were, like, trying to, you know, campaign through it and contact you and be like, hey, get out there and vote. And they leaked it. Remind me again why we need to build these databases in the first place. This was one of those where um, it was just an ID on the end of a URL. And it iterated, and you could just One, two, yep, three. just keep checking. <laughs> wow. Good job. Nice. Now, <clears throat> perhaps, wait a minute, what are these numbers? That was 6.5. Okay, so I, I got these in, in order of severity. That, that was good. I was, I was intending to do that. I don't know if I got it right. But let's move on to the Danish leak, which was smaller, but still embarrassing. Software error exposes the ID numbers for 1.26 million Danish citizens. The Danish tax portal accidentally shares taxpayer identification numbers with Google and Adobe Analytics Services. Whoops. Uh, bad day <laughs> to be a Dane. Now in this one, uh, you had to know the actual number, but after you input the number in a form, it appended it to the URL. But they had Google and Adobe Analytics on these sites, <laughs> which meant that every URL was being reported back to those services. That's actually not the worst 
error that I've seen. Like that's actually a common thing. I have to explain five or six times now because there'll be like some ad agency that's like, no, we want to track all form submissions. And I was like, no, you don't. They're like, no, we really do. I was like, no, you don't. And here's why. And they're like, why would that be bad? It's not like it's on the public internet. We can just, that's like Google literally in their terms of service doesn't want an email or a name or any kind of identifying number. You cannot use that. Oh yeah. Yeah. They're like, eh, whatever. please don't give us that. And then they're just like <laughs> gobbling it up. <laughs> put it on the profile. Yeah, pretty much. They, they were able to put like, five other database leaks that was the rosetta stone <laughs> that let them unlock all that advertising data and they're like oh yes we needed that thank you please don't do it again it turns out this voter is also interested in women's shoes <laughs> noted <laughs> it's important time to advertise some shoes and and finally the smallest leak but definitely the most embarrassing because it contains nudes but not those kinds of nudes not sexy nudes not the fun nudes but really embarrassing nudes. Plastic surgery images and invoices leaked from unsecured database. The images, many of which, many of them are graphic, came from a French imaging company called Next Motion. Yeah, plastic surgery. So we learned about Clearview, where like Clearview is just scraping the AI, and you got to think that there's like, you know, an evil twin version of Clearview that's just scraping the dark web, putting all of this into a giant database. What if Clearview got this data? And then you use these images to match your old face with your new face. <laughs> oh. You never escape it. No. Do you guys hear that plane? It's so loud. loud. Maybe it's a could be a helicopter. Oh yeah, it's probably a helicopter. They're scanning for coronavirus. They're delivering wine. <laughs> well, I was just thinking, you know, oh, something's happened. It's a chemical spill. It's fine. <laughs> well, uh, Alexa, you know, that's in everybody's home and it's spying. Uh, there's no question about it, but people are stupid. So they keep buying them and keep installing them. <laughs> and this is one of those, like you cause a problem and then you sell the solution. <laughs> it's amazing. Activate this bracelet of silence. Uh, Alexa and Siri and all other listening devices can't really hear you anymore. It, uh, emits a whole bunch of uh, ultrasonic interference that these microphones pick up really well and it just shows up as noise on the uh, various smart devices. I guess this is nice if you're visiting other people's homes. This is like dystopian high fashion. <laughs> Although Everyone's going to have one. It's going to be the hot new accessory for fall. Don't we have FCC rules about jamming electronics? This is okay because it's not uh, 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 radio frequency. Oh, okay. But if I went to somebody else's house and I stopped their Alexa from working... It's totally fine. I guess they could throw me out if they wanted to. Yeah, because it's, uh, it's ultrasonic and not radio frequency. Somebody gets like, really upset. They're like, Alexa, no! <laughs> whereas, get out of here, you monster! Whereas if you were to set off a mini EMP at someone's house to take out their electronics, that would not be okay. What have you done to Alexa? <laughs> <laughs> you and your stupid bracelet! Now what we need to do is create an adversarial AI that makes a series of electronic pulses that sounds like you're ordering a bunch of stuff from a partner that you control on Amazon. Mm. Yeah, that'd be cool. <laughs> we could subliminally well, add it to the episodes of the news and no one would know for several days. We won't control the partner. We need to, you know, to divorce ourselves from it. We will let the partners pay us. <laughs> To put them into the noise. <laughs> we are we're the first advertiser that bypasses consumer choice. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll do really small transactions for like really common things. And people will be like, you know, I did need Q tips. I'll just keep these. <laughs> <laughs> if uh, you know, if our ad is exposed to a potential buyer that has any smart device, they are no longer a potential buyer, <laughs> they are a buyer. <laughs> Perfect. That's a real. That's a strong business right there. <laughs> well, we often talk about uh, storage. You know, we have all these amazing. Uh, what's what are we up to in terms of SD cards? It's like a terabyte, right? Yeah, uh, five hundred twelve gigs is readily available, and I think you can get a terabyte with a little bit of finagling. Two terabytes if you're Samsung or Sandisk. Th those are like the five hundred dollar ones, but they're out there. And you always make the comparison. Every article is like the complete works of Shakespeare could be, you know, recorded 10 billion times on this. <laughs> well, how about another comparison when it comes to computing power and ancient technology? Developer finds USB chargers have as much processing power as the Apollo 11's guidance computers. 
they're talking about like USB-C and power delivery where it actually has to make some choices about not overloading the device because with USB-C you plug it in and it's like <laughs> I'm <laughs> stuck, stuck image. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't notice this when I read this version. Well, when you when you're just like scrolled up, it just looks like a normal like stock image of the the charger. But then you scroll down, it's Look like oh. Look at this clickbait. <laughs> what is it? It's very effective clickbait. <laughs> it's a, what would these five robot couples be a match made in computing heaven or would oh. these? Uh, uh, that's a valid. Do data, you guys think they would be? Data and uh, one of the mystery science theater robots was the first one. <laughs> Robocop was he really a robot? No. Uh, anyway. Uh, they kind of massage the numbers a little bit and they also point out that uh, while these might have the computing power if you calculate it right they would not survive space travel no so maybe harden your electronics there anchor wouldn't that be a great uh, advertising thing to be like this you know SpaceX uses anchor I uh I'm imagining that it will probably live to see the future where uh, the USB chargers have as much computational horsepower as like the current iPhone 11, that's going to be the dystopia because it's going to be doing video and audio surveillance of literally everything around it at all times. As if it's not? Well, I mean, probably like echolocation and whatever. Yeah, but when it's as ubiquitous as like a USB charger and literally every device that you have, that's going to be like way worse than where we are now. Yeah. We'll definitely be living in, you know, like pods at that point. It's being nutrient paste pumped to us <laughs> while we work on our Google Docs. <laughs> Every day you get up and it's like, okay, which five companies am I going to allow to monetize me today? <laughs> <laughs> well, the Oscars happened and... Uh, Who cares? It seems like very few people cared, but a couple of interesting thing ha things happened. The, uh, the movie that won Best Picture was not like one of the authorized Hollywood movies and a lot of people were freaked out about that. <laughs> but also, uh, when you win an Oscar, you get to make a statement. And this gentleman chose to, chose to make a, an interesting one. I'm it needed to it. be said. <laughs> Taika Waititi slams Apple's MacBook keyboards after winning his first Oscar, which is why we're mentioning it. He was just, uh, you get the exact quote because it's glorious. It's I, amazing. I love the headline too because it makes it sound like he literally just took one out and smashed it. Like, <laughs> Apple needs to fix those keyboards, he said. They are impossible to write on. They've gotten worse. It makes me want to go back to PCs because PC keyboards, the bounce your fingers back thing is way better. Heads up, uh, you know, hands up who still uses a PC. You know what I'm talking about. This is a way better keyboard. Those Apple keyboards are horrendous. Thank you. Yes. I love the people that were like, this butterfly keyboard is amazing. It's not. It's terrible. I'm not sure if this is just like something he actually does think about. He's like one of us or if he was just on a drunken rant. I get the Dell like he's version. He's a rider. I get the Dell version. So that has could like be either or. An extra 0.6 millimeters of travel. And it also is horrendous. Now, they point out that they're not sure if he has an older Mac laptop that had the bad <laughs> keyboard. And he's not aware that the newer ones are different. Or if he's got the new one and he still hates it. So we're not sure. Maybe he clarified that on his Twitter. Pretty sure that it would be the old one because he wouldn't have. He probably hasn't written anything on the new one yet. But I'm sure he's got some money. He could afford. Yeah, it. he could get a new one if he needed. I'm it. sure he's got an extra fifteen grand to throw out for <laughs> a new laptop. Laptops that cost fifteen thousand dollars and have two hundred dollars of components in them. Uh, we always talk about weird signals from space, right? And you always get excited when there's a weird signal because you're like, "Yeah, it's the aliens!" It's the Finally. They're sending us, you know, whatever their communication is. And usually you get some downer scientist who's like, no, that's not what that is. It's this other thing that's commonplace and makes sense. But now we got a new one. And the beauty of this one is there's no explanation yet. Something in deep space is sending signals to Earth in a steady 16-day cycle. Uh, headline's a little misleading. Something in deep space is sending signals that happen to be making it to Earth. And it's like 500 million years away. And, uh... They think that, okay, maybe it's just something that's maybe orbiting a black hole every 16 days. And when it's on the far side, we're not getting the signals. But I like to think it's aliens. <laughs> it's that horrible distress beacon from the movie Sunshine. <laughs> I don't know what they expect us to do. We can't even travel that far, bro. Sorry. You know what we'll do? Thoughts and prayers. <laughs> Change our profile picture to the black hole you're orbiting. What, whatever sent the, the signals was probably already gobbled up by the black hole. Yeah, well, 
500 million years ago, right? <laughs> how, is, what is, how fast is radio travel compared to light? It's close, but it's slower. So even longer. Rip, pour one out for the black hole galaxy. Uh, well, the uh, police in the UK often embarrass themselves with their press releases. They are really cringeworthy. And uh, most people probably wouldn't understand why this one is. But I think our audience will. Call us immediately. If your child uses Cali Linux, squawks at mid, uh, West Mids Police. Now, I think the article has since been updated. And they said, no, we didn't We didn't write this. No. It's no. Like, got their email on it. Yeah. It's like, uh, what's on a child's computer? Tor? Oh, that's terrible. Virtual machines? Also terrible. Cali Linux? They're literally the devil. Wi-Fi <laughs> Pineapple or Discord? If they're using Discord, Discord. That's, that's hacker talk. Is this like the seven letters of hell that your child's going to end up in if they use that program? <laughs> yeah, it's like report your child to the police if they're using this software. This Discord? is terrible. Yeah, Discord. It's just terrible. Discord's like the sixth level of hell. Because Discord, you know, that's where you go to talk about your hacking. Right. If you're on there. You're, you're definitely, definitely don't shit post memes on there. Yeah, Never. So. That, I mean, they're probably, you probably should interfere in your child's life if they're doing these things, but only to socialize them, not to stop them. <laughs> They'll eventually probably make money doing this stuff. So don't stop it. Just, you know, try they have, to get, they have a promising career <laughs> in the computing sciences. Uh, yeah. That, you got to wonder does anybody at that police station know anything about any of those topics? I got to say, the chances are slim. Andrew Yang is out of the presidential race. Mm. Poor one out. Sad. Not really. But he, uh, before he was out of the race, he did have something controversial to say. Now, this <laughs> might be something that led to voters being turned off from his, uh, his message. Andrew Yang says, Bowser players are carried in Smash Ultimate. He's talking about the video game Super Smash Brothers. Uh, it sounds like me Ultimate. talking about Doomfist. It's not clear. So there's someone tweeted this. It wasn't Yang that tweeted this, but it's definitely him. And he does say exactly that. <laughs> Maybe someone convinced him to say that. I don't know. It has been revealed previously that he is a gamer. And uh, he claims that he was a big uh, StarCraft player. Oh, yeah. Protoss. So, who knows? What was the game uh, AOC played? Everyone was talking about it. At one I think point. it's like League of Legends. It's one of the MOBAs. Yeah, that's it's weird. We're reaching that point where like our oh, representatives are playing games. She's pandering. <laughs> I don't know. And I, he's not. I don't know. I think Fatality could probably be electable. Oh, I'm sure he is too. No, I'm, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not saying that one is better than the other, but I, I say at least if you're going to talk a big game. Hey, that's easy. Jump on Twitch, right? <laughs> Bernie's already there, man. Prove it. <laughs> Bernie, Bernie would be one of those people who can't do like the dual stick walk and look. Yeah, he's that age. It's, you know, he'd be like that. Really frustrating trying to watch him play GTA. Just, but that I, more politicians should do that. What a great platform, right? And you could get some gaming company on board to like help you with, like, give you money to make your setup. I mean, what would Blizzard give Bernie? For him to stream like Overwatch, yeah. <laughs> if he would play like you know whatever, a mount for a while and a lot of macros. This one uh, doesn't have a lot to do with technology, but I, it's just it's a hilarious story, and I'm <laughs> I'm torn between uh, being someone who's always been right on the the verge of doing this because you know I don't like children. But also being terrified of it, just like LASIK surgery. Because what if something goes wrong? It's like an outpatient procedure. Uh, what if, Krista? What if? It's not something I want to lose, lose the function of. <laughs> Alabama has a proposed law that requires men to undergo a vasectomy after their 50th birthday. What's the, what's the logic here? This is a political statement about abortion. So they're saying that men are legislating on women's bodies, women should legislate on men's bodies. Also, not in the headline, it's also after your third child. So you get three or you get to 50 and then you gotta get the snip. So it's not real. No one uh. really thinks this. But it is an interesting thought experiment in terms of this is seems more outrageous than abortion bans. See, I was thinking this was like a you know, oh, studies prove that older fathers, you know, their, their children are more likely to have genetic deficiencies, so we're just going to snip them. 
Well, that's Which probably, I was like, that's kind of dystopian. That's probably also true. Uh, I'm a huge, like, anti-birth, lower population guy, but good lord, we cannot put the government in charge of that. that no. Is, <laughs> Do you want to eat a jeep pie in charge of Because <laughs> that's how you get a jeep pie. Yeah. Uh, as good as all these sound, the unintended consequences would be horrific. Isn't, like, they got, like, uh, three to one males and females in parts of China now yes. because yes. of that stupid program? Yeah. Ugh. Terrible. Well, we talk a lot about uh, the uh, education system and how far we've gone into this new, like, you know, culture where nobody can be sad or threatened and how crazy it gets. And here's a great illustration of that. A school called police after a kindergartner with Down syndrome pointed a finger gun at her teacher. The girl's mom says they went too far. Yeah, the police were called because that was threatening, but the girl has Down syndrome. Yeah. I Also, it's a finger gun. What, what are you supposed to do when you get in the elevator well, it's, if you don't finger gun the people in there? Krista, that is a transient threat. You don't yeah. get arrested for that. But if she hadn't had Down syndrome, and they, if the cops had shown up and be like, yeah, I'll shoot the bitch, <laughs> then probably would have something would have happened. There. Would, uh, how are you supposed to greet your coworkers in the morning if you don't finger gun? <laughs> you, and God help you if you don't do double finger gun. Oh, wow. That's the only way to go. That elevates it to terrorism right there. I seem to remember as a kid having a very realistic looking like six shooter that would shoot caps. I had so many of those. Water guns guns were like totally a thing. Everyone had had water guns. Like M16s. Oh, I like I I was an avid collector of guns even as a child. I think the one that I had actually belonged to my uncle, my great uncle, when he was a kid. And it was just like made out of, and it was like the tin was so leaded that after a while playing with it, like your hand was just all covered with lead. And it was like, oh. Yeah. And you had, they had the paper roll caps. Yeah. But then they had the little plastic caps. Oh, no. This was paper roll. And uh, like I had one of the old Mausers with the plastic caps. That was fantastic. <laughs> no, this was because it would feed them like it was semi automatic. Oh, okay, like, okay. you know. But those were so good, and I inhaled so much of that, whatever that smell. was in that, those caps. Yeah, I mean, I can smell it now. It's just like a terrible, terrible smell. Today's kids will never know that joy. No, they won't. That's uh, terrible. It depends where they grow up. <laughs> if they grow up in the past around here, then yeah. Well, let's say my cousin said he took his, his son's squirrel hunting the other day. He said that they did not catch anything because <laughs> his sons were so yeah. excited every time they saw one. But that's... You know, that's real guns. And that's, I, I applaud that, but that's not the same as you being unsupervised because caps aren't going to hurt you. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I was learning to fire a 308 before it was even remotely safe for me to be handling that weapon. Those days are gone. <laughs> Actually, they're still alive in the, the gun sanctuary cities. I mean, it was bolt action, so I mean, there wasn't a lot of damage I could do, but still. Okay. Really? <laughs> not a lot of damage? <laughs> <laughs> well, just the one. That's a surprising you, amount of damage. That's when you get the like the uh, Full Metal Jacket speech <laughs> about a, a man in a tower with a three hundred eight. Oh, it's getting to be tax time. Is everybody ready? <laughs> oh. If you don't like that, then don't vote for Bernie. Jesus Christ! <laughs> but. If you're a big online gamer, there's something that you might need to think about this tax year because the new tax guidelines have new lines. <laughs> the IRS has quietly deleted the guideline that uh, Fortnite virtual currency must be reported on tax returns. <laughs> Christo, are you going to put your loot boxes down? No, as no. An asset? Because, listen, we already have to pay. <laughs> we already have to pay money back every year. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a mess. So uh, it Ooh, turns out gonna that... going to be weird because you bought the house. And... Yeah. They listed Fortnite specifically in, like, literally in the IRS documentation. The word Fortnite is in there, or was. They took that out, but they talked to a tax lawyer here, and he was like, well, they took out the specific thing, but that line, the stuff about online assets are still there, so I would play it safe. And, and just th- mention you have 700 loot boxes? <laughs> or like, <what? laughs> I don't know exactly it works. I can't wait to go to H&R Block and then sit down and be like, by the way... <laughs> And then ha- watch the look of confusion on their face. Are, uh, can you transfer the Fortnite currency? I believe so, yeah. Can you? You can, can't in Overwatch. Can you transfer it to the Cayman Islands? I can do a mini Microsoft. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> how, mu- how much of that Offshore stuff? Offshore Because they show, uh, what's this dude's name? Ninja. Uh, Ninja. How much of that do you think he's got? A lot. 
You think he probably opens his on stream though, right? I think I think this will only be used to harass very small people because the IRS has shown that the large people that are doing committing outright tax fraud, they're basically their hands are tied. Do you think that uh, Google and Microsoft will start investing heavily in Fortnite bucks so that they can <laughs> evade taxes? I get a well, I get to wonder like EA on their tax return. It's like how much how much of an asset do you have in this virtual currency and they're like I don't know probably like a million dollars well but and it's like that number is much larger but the virtual currency doesn't exist until you trade money for it right yeah. so there is no inventory mm. it's the perfect crime <laughs> well they're holding currency though I mean that would be that are they their books because somebody gives them real dollars to get the fake currency but it, there's an infinite amount it's created from nothing yeah but they would still have to show that they would still have to show that they're holding money for somebody else's asset if they, unless they want to be taxed on that as income. Well, yeah, that would just be part of their earnings, I would think. <laughs> They're just going ahead and immediately declaring it as income. And it's like, no, this is not a virtual asset. So can't yeah. have it both way, IRS. It's not like cryptocurrency where there's a finite amount yeah. forever. It's, they'll sell as much as many Star Wars bucks as you'll give them money for. There's no, and it doesn't exist till you buy it. So <laughs> it's, it's, it just goes to show you what a stupid investment that is, doesn't it? I mean, an entity that can just create money and hold an infinite amount on its balance sheet? <laughs> that could never happen for real. Oh, wait. <laughs> oh, no. That sounds like the Fed. That wasn't on the ready.gov website. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, well, getting kicked off of planes is easier and easier to do as we go into our dystopia. But sometimes I think it might be justified. <laughs> EasyJet forced to make an emergency landing after a drunk man ate his phone. What a legend. And I was expecting this to be a clickbait headline. <laughs> nope, he ate his phone. He the did. battery started smoking. Oh. And they had to put the phone in water. And they were like, you know what? We're just... Is that really a way to deal with that? I don't think a battery and water would maybe cause problems. The lithium ion side of it? I don't know. I thought it was sand. I thought you had to put it in a bucket of sand. <laughs> well, I guess they didn't have a bucket of sand on the plane. No, they? they actually do now. Like as part of the safety thing, at least in the U.S., they have like they've all been trained on how to deal with laptops and crap that are having problems. So he was arrested. Obviously, he blames this on a combination of nerve medication and beer. Wow, that's it. How much beer did he drink? Because like drinking at an airport is expensive, as we discovered on our honeymoon. Oh, he, they, he smuggled gin onto the plane. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, they, <laughs> But you got to think that the nerve medication probably says something about not consuming alcohol with it. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Right. Yeah. Whoops. Uh, this one blew my mind because when back when we saw the first uh, trailer for Sonic the Hedgehog, I thought for sure this would be a flop. When he had no eyebrows. But they redid and it. human teeth. And it uh, didn't work for the Cats movie, <laughs> but it worked for Mr. Hedgehog. Sonic the Hedgehog is on track for the best box office debut and for a video ga game adaptation in history. Again, this further reinforces that the first leaks were really yeah. just a marketing campaign. That it would was, be brilliant if that was really what happened. It was also Valentine's Day, which you got to think a lot of people going on dates. But what a horrible date. <laughs> Jim, like, do you want to go see Sonic? And it's like... Mm. Jim Carrey's best performance ever. I haven't seen it. Did they mention the... Oh, Detective Pikachu, I guess, was the other. Yeah. Of course, we're probably going to go see 1917. $63 million <laughs> for opening weekend. Anybody want to take a guess as to how much Cats has earned in its entire run up till now? <laughs> is, is Cats oh, still in theaters? It's not up till now. It's over. Oh, it's over. <gasps> yeah. Well, how, you would, you, I, Eight I, weeks. I know the number. It's $27 million. 27.7. <laughs> I... I really wanted to go to like one of those drinking movie theaters and watch that movie, and I never got a chance. Well, you know, you can like the there are still theaters who run old movies. Oh, maybe I'll find. So one. you can get them there, but the, the like the the regular the, theaters. The full run it. is over. Yeah. That is that has got to be a, just whoever invested in that has got to be uh, got to be put on a watch. I'd say they put a bullet in that horse's head <laughs> to stop the the pain. Well, they uh, they made a joke about it at the Oscars, and it's like oh. <laughs> like, look, we can laugh at ourselves, too. Wasn't the whole, like, impetus behind the original Cats just to have an excuse to have talented singers and dancers on stage for no real reason other than to just show off them singing and dancing? Yeah, and so, like, I How think a that... lot of that was lost in the movie. I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, if you were going to do that with the movie, you would just need to get, like, a star-studded cast and just let them do whatever it is that they do and then there not, is, like, not a this plot, CGI though. thing. 
There is like a plot to, mm. to cats, apparently, but it's not much of a plot. Why not just use real cats? Just throw a bunch of cats out on stage. Just let them do their thing. Kid McCatley. <laughs> you don't have to actually like dress up and pay forty five dollars a ticket to see the Kitten Academy. <laughs> I don't know what you do, but that's what I do when I watch Kitten Academy. <laughs> this uh, this headline is definitely one of those uh, brand new sentences. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. First of all, I don't understand why you why your sex doll would be dead. Is it when you get a new one and you're out of storage or? <laughs> And I don't understand. Somebody has an intervention. Uh, I don't know. There's a, just so many question marks. Transsexual Jav idol monk performing funerals for sex dolls. Oh, what do you think Jav is? No one knows. I don't know what most of these words are. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess, uh, and so I know that here you can like send in and get registered and you can perform like weddings and stuff. You can be a, some sort of An officiant. Yeah. Is the word. And I guess you can do that same kind of thing to be a monk in Japan is what I take from this. So so this transsexual person who is famous in some way, I guess, uh, Jav Idol. Again, I don't know what Jav is. I don't know either. I feel like it's probably something bad and we don't know what it means. Let's just keep it that way. (laughs) Has done that. I kind of want to Google it now. And for 50,000 yen, we'll put your sex doll to rest. You get a picture, and you get a certificate, and they'll dispose of the robot. Now, for thirty thousand, you can do a group session. You don't get a certificate. You don't get a picture. Just as like you know, the, in a bulk batch of thirty, they'll throw your robot into a pit with other robots and <laughs> say some words. Oh, an unmarked over it. grave. For ninety thousand, you get to go to the surface and keep a part of it. They don't say which part. What oh. you, you could just do before you send it in. <laughs> I don't. This feels like like oh my motherboard died. I need to send it in for an RMA. <laughs> it's like having a few. Fun- Would you like to have a funeral service with your motherboard that died? It's like no, not particularly. Now I've never thought about this before, but now that I do think about it, it's it's terrifying. But I think it's got to exist. Is there no? Secondary market for sex dolls? <laughs> there probably is. Prob- well, that, that company's probably recycling those. <laughs> like those are those are going into like the organ, you know, like the the, the the doll equivalent of like the organ harvesting stuff. I don't know. I saw a uh, it was like a series of tweets. You know how they just screenshot a series of tweets on some website, and it was like getting married at such and such age. I, you know, she's my soulmate, and it's like. A year later, it was like getting a divorce. This is the worst day of my life. And then getting a sex doll. This is so much better than dealing with real women. And then the final was my sex doll gave me a urinary tract infection. (laughs) (laughs) Just a dark cycle. The person's like, it can't be, it can't be me. That's the problem in this whole equation. It's everyone else and the sex doll. Ain't nobody got time for that. Cleaning, you mean cleaning the sex doll? Just, yeah, just being a, Make a time. decent human Make being. Make time for that. Yeah. I meant for individuals like that. <laughs> Not to. Uh, well, if you if all of this has turned you off to the idea of a sex doll, but you still require the, uh, the cold embrace of robotic love, perhaps this <laughs> is, for, is something that would... Uh, work for you so there's it's project melody it's a it's a it's an anime ai cam girl thing hentai or hentai okay i'm sorry actually so uh i sent i sent this to krista and we were like you know we had we had a lot of questions we're not going to click through no you don't want to click through i made the mistake of doing that at work by the way they definitely do they want to and they will but we're not going to no so um this is an ai and this person makes artwork And I don't know if it's like, is there a live animation? I'm not sure how that works, but the... uh, I didn't delve too deep. Melody said she was excited that this was going to be her first Valentine's Day on CB. And Chris and I were like, what's CB? CB? What do we got to guess? We had no idea. Think about the online services that could be CB. It's Chatterbait. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's kind of live then. Yes. Live AI 
hentai streaming. It's never been done before. It's incredible. I. I, wonder, I think the the Patreon is like two grand a month already. No, it was way more than that oh, was this morning. It? Yeah. Oh wow. Picked up over Valentine's Day. Oh, that's Pick, sad, isn't it? Picked up over the last few it's days. It's like when you check the Facebook marketplace after Valentine's Day and there's a bunch of rings on there and you're like, <laughs> Ooh. The, the last post I saw was, oh, hello and welcome everybody. Where are you all coming from? And it's like, I don't know. Yeah, I think it's one of the posts. It's like, I can't believe that this was supposed to be a joke, but I guess we're just going to go with it. <laughs> sad. Well, good luck to Melody and all of her fans, I suppose. <laughs> Congratulations to the artist who just hit it big. I'm going to go back to benchmarking the Xeons and Threadrippers, thanks. Which yeah. are going to power Melody. You can't escape <laughs> <Yeah>. it. <laughs> Threadripper no 64 core was built to solve this computer graphics <laughs> problem. You can have a whole harem of anti-girls. <laughs> oh. <laughs> We're going to have to add another Threadripper note to the cluster. We've gotten too many subscribers. <laughs> uh, well, if you think that that... Those two stories are evidence that humanity should be destroyed. Maybe you're in luck. Thanks to the forbidden popcorn shrimp. <laughs> Images. The, what the new coronavirus looks like under a microscope. Looks delicious. Mmm. Look mm, at those. Chicken tenders. <laughs> they look breaded and deep fried. They look very See, I good. think they look more like, uh, like popcorn chicken or popcorn shrimp. I was thinking nuggies. Rounded. They look like chicken nuggies. I, I think they would need to be more oblong. Because like no. this one's a perfect circle. That looks real. Maybe hush puppies. No. This is a surprising amount of variance to those. That one's scary. Because they're hand, they're hand threatening breaded. air to that image. Yeah. These are not pun punched out by a machine. <laughs> These are artisan nuggets. <laughs> These are perfectly spherical chicken nuggets. <laughs> Apparently, uh, I was reading this article and like they they said that all all vir they all appear like this where they've got like the little spiky things around. It's like part of that virus group. That all part of their flavor like profile. Yeah. <laughs> So wait, so we were saying, you know, it looks like this, this, or this. So it really, you know, regular flu is like cheeky nuggets. And this is like popcorn shrimp. They're all related, but. Yeah. It's part of like. A, hungry. You could get the $10 meal box and get them all. Ooh. Yeah, delicious. It would be the last meal of your life. Is that for that seafood market? Is that what? <laughs> oh. Bat nuggets. <laughs> They're now saying the those little uh, armadillo-looking animals might be the... Oh, yeah. I know what you're talking pangolin. about. Pangolin. Yeah, yeah. Pangolin. I did this. Like, the, the chat would know what that meant. Of but course. Everybody knows that's the international symbol for the pangolin. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, we are being tracked by, you know, facial recognition and fingerprinting. And now DNA profiling is big. That's been big for a while. And the powers that be think that they can just... Take your DNA. If you get arrested, guess what? You're now in the DNA system. Great. And one group, hilariously, and it's probably going to end badly for them, has decided to retaliate. They attended the uh, the Davos Millionaire Club meeting, or Billionaire Club. What, are the, what is that called? G20, is that G25 or G50? Uh, uh, do I look like I'm rich enough to be there? <laughs> well, you can, you can look at the news articles. Anyway, all the rich people get together in this beautiful town, and uh, some people attended... And did something unexpected. Trump's DNA is reportedly for sale. Here's what somebody could do with it. So not just Trump, but a lot of other people that were at this event. The organizers are hoping that by making these utensils and hairs and other stuff that they were able to collect there, that we actually get some reasonable legislation for protecting things like people's errant DNA. And Is this just a snot rag? I think so. What is yeah. that? It's sawdust. <laughs> I don't think you want to know. <laughs> <laughs> so these are all up for auction. Uh, a single hair is not worth much, but the Trump fork, they're expecting to get quite a bit for that. <laughs> Why bother with that? I mean, I don't, I don't think Putin needs the fork. He could just use the old polonium and he'll be all set. Well, it's so you can create a coronavirus that's specifically targeted toward Trump and his family. Well, it seems like polonium would be a better choice, though. Yeah, but it's easier to... It's not as elegant. <laughs> so you, you want something that's undetectable. Now, a lot of people are quarantined right now because of the uh, the forbidden popcorn <laughs> chicken. Corona chain. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, <laughs> the it, Shanghai sneezies. The Wuhan quarantine looks particularly hellish and, uh, you know, terrifying. 
And in fact, people are trying to avoid it and being beaten in the streets. <laughs> it's it's a bit of a dystopia over there. We learned but, about the wine delivery last episode. Yeah, the cruise ship. So a lot of the Western people are quarantined on cruise ships because they were just in the wrong place at the wrong time. And life on a quarantine cruise ship, you got to think, is pretty boring, right? What would you do? Play on the internet. What if you didn't have any internet? I would slowly go insane. I would probably, <laughs> if I had the iPad, I would draw. They better bring well, me a lot of books. But yeah, Maybe. it's like once I once it's like okay, I've drawn a, a bunch, and now it's like I can't get on the internet, and I don't have any books. Like, what do you do with yourself? Just stick your head out the window and breathe deeply. Scream. <laughs> just pray for the end. I thought just scream repeat. <laughs> well, they do have the internet. In fact, they have pretty decent internet connections. But even then, what do you do with your time? Well, another company has figured out a great way to get free marketing because of Corona Chan. Free porn offered to quarantine coronavirus cruise passengers. Uh, it's Cam Soda, and uh, the article goes on to talk some more about some other offers from other companies that want in on this. Now, it's not just free porn. This is free live cam shows. They're offering a thousand tokens. I don't know how many tokens it costs to get a cam show, but a thousand sounds like a lot. How dark if you're a cam girl and you have to perform for people who are just like, Coughing, <laughs> dying from coronavirus. No, I think it would, the, the darkest one is like, I tested positive, I'm probably going to die. I feel fine uh, right now, but this is probably the last time I'm going to see anybody. Yeah, that is dark. It's, uh, that sounds like, um, what was the... Uh, anyway, you look great. What, what was the romantic comedy from the 90s about email? You've, you've got mail? You've got mail. Yeah, and it had uh, the actors in it. Meg uh, Ryan? No. Tom Hanks. Meg Ryan and Tom Hanks. Yeah. All right. So imagine you've got mail, Meg Ryan and Tom Hanks, but the setup for it is literally this. A cam girl and somebody that survives miraculously. That's how the movie ends. It's like they get it and they're going to die and then, you know, they get married. And live but the whole forever. conflict oh, no. in You've Got Mail was that they were rival bookstore owners. Yeah, yeah. But in You've Got Corona, the twist is he survives and he tracks her down. But she died from it. Oh, wow. I'll have that script ready in two weeks. <laughs> Inquiries below. <laughs> no one wants that. They're, they're still, we're still we're in production hell for As the Circle Shrinks. <laughs> and PUBG is not even can, popular anymore. We can incorporate the coronavirus into that. But we gotta I get think it the out PUBG quick. script was perfect. <laughs> I think the, we got like maybe two more months left while coronavirus is hot. Before mm. everybody's tired of it, so we need to get it out quickly. I hope Computex is not canceled this year. It'd be crazy if they canceled it this far ahead. There, a lot of weird shits going on with like China just flexing on Taiwan during all this for some reason. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> like, use anything to uh, flex on Taiwan. <laughs> just sending planes and shit over there. Why? I think Taiwan has definitely been vocal about questioning, like the numbers and stuff. Oh yeah, and I don't think that. Uh, President that, that Poo is, likes that. That has not been tolerated. Uh, well, the final story, we voted on which story to put last, and uh, Krista overwhelmingly demanded this one. Because really, I'm a child. It doesn't have a lot to do with technology, although this guy did tweet while this whole thing was happening. The whole time. So, uh, Colin O'Brady, his solo Antarctic trek on one pair of dirty underwear. Oh. So, one guy with a 400-pound sled dragging behind him, he has crossed the Arctic. Uh, the Antarctic and uh, on like day two or three I guess he sort of binged on his rations and then pooped himself he did not bring a change I feel like that's just why well because Krista you're always talking about like ultralighting but listen there's ultralight and then there's like stupid ultralight well he was where you're not prepared for the conditions he had to cross the entire Antarctic every ounce mattered and he was like you know what I didn't care if I stank. I'm no one else's. I'm the only person on the you know continent. So I just didn't think about a change of clothes. And also the brutal temperatures. He talked about one poop a day outdoors. Yeah. And then one poop in the morning inside the camp. So he also had. He they estimated he was going to expend like eight thousand calories a day, Whew. just hauling that pack over the the snow. So they had like these super heavy fat, high calorie content mega bars that they made just for him. 
And one night he couldn't help himself. He had three of them. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And therein lies the problem. His body was like eject, eject, eject. And it He's would like, take I him. I can hold it. I can deal. Well, it's like 20, 30 minutes just to get your gear off. Yeah. And then a really cold dump because you've already broken the camp down. So he gambled and he lost. Big F in chat <laughs> for, <laughs> for poopy pants here. It's surprising to me that he didn't bring at least one change because, like, what it, just on the off chance, you know, if you get wet, that's so dangerous in a cold environment like that to, to get too wet. I listen, he's like, hardcore. what if, like, if you poop your pants, like, everything's wet? He must have had taken into account something because he would have been sweating a lot, yeah, spending 8,000 calories. So, mm. uh, yeah, I don't know. It's cool that he did it though. It just raises more more questions than answers from this pant pooping article. <laughs> I feel like I feel like you know the for you know the whatever night it is that you poop yourself it's like okay you know what maybe it's not for me. <laughs> maybe it was just a streak <laughs> and he wasn't getting enough headlines and he was like all right I'm going to get the headlines. Well it was definitely a fart that you know was <laughs> got the better of him. That, so I don't think it a was shirt. like a full dump in the pants. <laughs> but that's that's really unpleasant. I want to see the CNN computer simulations. And he did talk about how, like, the rest of that day, it's like it a was, video of everything was, like, sticking together <laughs> as it dried. And he had to just... Small and he was bass. And he was just... He was on skis, so he was just working the ass muscles the entire day oh. through that. That's how you get baby rash. That's bad. Wow. I imagine he had a lot of rashes and unpleasantness <laughs> after all those days in the Arctic. But he did it. He powered through. Yeah. Single, a solo cross the Antarctic. That is, in, that is an incredible level of uh, human achievement. I he said, think. like, as soon as he finished, he called his girlfriend. He's like, we did it. And I wonder if he followed up with, and my pants are full of shit. <laughs> Bring some underwear. <laughs> or he was like, psych, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't do anything. I'm leaving you. <laughs> For a seal. <laughs> right. For Melody. That's all we got this week. Wow, almost an hour. It's long. Another Ooh. set of long news this week. I'm feeling oh. it too. I'm sleepy. Krista, give us a bye. Bye.